There comes a time in every hockey player's life where they have to realize they're not as good as Kale McCarr. For most of us, that is a given. But for someone like Quinn Hughes, Nathan McKinnon, this season certainly Connor McDavid, that's impressive stuff. Avs win over the Vancouver Canucks 5-2. Most of the Avs tonight were good, not great, and that's good enough to win. The first period was solid from Colorado. You felt like they played better for the majority of it, though through 15 minutes there was nothing to show for it, and the most consistent problem of the season for the Avs continues to be giving up the first goal of the game. Vancouver rings around the backside and goes all the way out up high, and you're going to see Jack Johnson chases all the way. There's no ultimate handoff to Cogliano here. He just sticks with the puck carrier, and this creates a puck battle for the Avs high in the zone, and the Avs cheat a little bit. Both Kiviranta and Olofsson start to fly the zone before this puck is won. So when the Avs ultimately lose this puck battle, they're a little bit behind the play. Now, this turns out to be kind of alright, as a nice play by diving Cogliano gives them time to get back, but they never fully get back into quality defensive position. You're going to see both Kiviranta and Olofsson are taking the high man here, which leaves no one to cover down inside, and Josh Manson is left in a place where he needs to cover two men crashing the net. Not a good place to be, and not his fault. So as this puck comes in towards the net on a shot, a rebound is created, and you suddenly realize no one is covering the net front. Olafson just floating in nowhere is too slow to get there on not just a second opportunity that goes off the post, but a third opportunity finally goes in. I understand that's a hard play to read with a defenseman very high in the zone there, but cover players, not ice, and Olafson was covering ice there. Left the guy all alone in front of your net, you pay the price for it. Season long, this is far from a problem that only falls on Olafson. The Avs have really struggled to defend their net front area consistently. I've talked a lot about how stylistically the Avs defend that area by preventing the puck from ever getting there whenever possible. But when the puck does get there, they seem to just have no answer. Thankfully, the answer they do provide is getting that goal back. The Avs power play comes through. You give a skilled hockey team some opportunity, eventually it's going to work. The Avs get set up and they have a little switch where Miko comes off the half wall and works down low as Druin comes to that half wall spot. Picard's going to give this puck to Druin, who's going to get it down to Miko down low. Val plays this perfectly. As the guy defending the net front commits to Miko, he slides off him to the backside, and Miko's so good, he'll get you this puck. He puts the perfect amount of sauce on it, and the puck's in your net. That is the all-world flair that we're used to seeing from Miko Rantanen. He'd been a little bit quiet over the last handful of games. Sauce like that? Yeah, that'll get you noticed. On Val's side, that is goals in five straight games for him. He is El Fuego. A quality goal, and then the Avs get a fun goal to take the lead in the first. This first part doesn't result in a goal, but I just want to show off a super clean cycle by Colorado. First, Tatar beats a man to get the Avs fully into the zone, and then they're set up. He just gets it down in deep, Nichir Shushkin works it back out. Byram's going to get involved in the cycle by jumping in here. And the Avs are rotating very, very well on this near side. From there, Byram gets it in extra deep. The Avs look for a play for Jonathan Druin in the middle of the ice, but it gets broken up. A nice read by Byram to jump back through and keep this play alive. Play's dead without that. McCarr ultimately going to blast one in from out high. The Avs get the look they want. The two guys set up in the lane trying to screen the goalie. It's not the usual Nachushkin tip this time. Time, though it's Jonathan Druin sliding in at the last second on the backside just getting in there with his stick to get the perfect tip over the glove. A tip-in goal is not the type of goal you would expect Jonathan Druin to score. Funny enough, I looked it up. That's actually his sixth tip-in goal of his career, which is more than I thought I would find. But I think it's a good lesson. When you're playing good hockey, which I believe Druin has certainly over the last handful of games and the points aren't coming, what do you do? You go to the net. He has the skill. It's not complicated. You just got to get to the right areas. And this becomes Druin's first multi-point game with the Avs as he had a secondary on the first goal too. And the Avs turn a good but not great period into a lead. The second period was absolute nonsense. There was more time not at 5-on-5 five five than there was. You had 
kind of ridiculous calls all throughout the period. Josh Manson got thrown out of the game for defending himself against a Brock Besser cross check. And look, I have no problems with Josh Manson getting a double minor there. I really don't think he intentionally did anything to Brock Besser by catching him in the face. Brock Besser more kind of skated into his stick. But there was still a cross check there. That's fine. I just don't see how you end up throwing that guy out of the game for a penalty that he's not even really committing. Anyway, it was a very uneven period with very strange things going on. A lot of four-on-four four and a lot of weird 10-second-ish power plays. The vast majority of Josh Manson's major penalty gets negated by penalties called on Vancouver. Just super weird and gross. The only goal of the period is on a four-on-four four and it goes Vancouver's way. This is really should be a pretty routine hockey play. Hughes gets this puck up to Miller. Miller goes through the neutral zone in what is a two-on-two -two situation, but there's no help coming. You have McKinnon and Val back here. This really shouldn't be that dangerous. Taves forces him to the outside. Now, Miller is a lefty, so he is on his forehand side here. But still, Taves does a good job of not letting him cut for free to the middle. It's great puck defense from JT Miller. He's able to get in pretty darn deep while protecting this puck, playing it off his own skate there back to the stick. That's good stuff, but still. Short side should never be an option here, and that's exactly where Georgiev gets beat. I say this understanding that Alexander Georgiev played very well tonight and that the Avs don't win without him playing very well, but that goal's got to be stopped. It's just not a good goal. You cannot get beat short side there. So after the strange period, it's tied 2-2, and it's one period to win the game. Was this the best third period of the season for the Avs? No, not even close. Was it the worst? No, it was a good period. And importantly, the Avs started it strong. Instead of battling it out in a tie, in the first 90 seconds, they give themselves the lead. This third line, man, it's never clean, but they find ways to make it work. They get up the ice, they get in the zone, they don't really create anything initially, just a puck thrown to an area. Byram's able to get to it, he works it down in deep. Colton's able to find it and dig it out. This is definitely not intended for Ross Colton, he's just throwing this puck to an area, but it floats all the way through on to Wood's stick and Wood does a great job of getting this puck on net here. I want to give him some credit. He shoots this thing through a pair of legs. Oop through a pair of legs, there we go, finds a way to give it a chance. And that's all he does here. He's probably not really shooting to score. He's just getting it in there and hoping for the best. And the best is Riley Tufty's shin pad, baby. Kicks right off him and trickles through the five hole. Riley Tufty's first point as an Av, even if it goes off your shin, it still counts. Where did he go? The front of the net. And the Avs held it down pretty well. They gave up some decent chances, but Georgiev was there to stop them. They didn't give up too much. Shots were 7-5 to five at the end of the game. That's not crazy. They survived Vancouver's push, and then when you need a superstar to secure the game for you, you're not calling Quinn Hughes, you're calling Kale McCarr. A blocked shot here creates a little bit of a scramble, and then things settle in as the Avs are in their defensive posture. McCarr, with his man on JT Miller, sees JT try and control a puck, go for a bit of a spin move up the wall, and just clean picks his pocket. Just knocks it out perfectly and is on the break from there. You're not going to catch Kale McCarr, and he beats Demko over the glove. By himself. Kale McCarr goes out and secures this game for Colorado. On a per-game basis, there is only one player in the NHL scoring at a better rate than Kale McCarr, and that's Jack Hughes, who is a forward and has played six less games than McCarr. He's just a hockey player that the world has never seen someone like before. When you look at the stats, he's kind of just better than Quinn Hughes at everything when you're talking about rates. I guess Quinn Hughes has had a better goal-scoring rate this year by a bit, but that's about the only one. McCarr has better possession metrics, he's got better expected goals, better chance generation and prevention. He's even pushing a similar on-ice shooting percentage at 5-on-5 five five when compared to Hughes. Dude's just better. The Avs add on an empty netter to get your 5-2 final, and let there be no doubt, Kale McCarr is the best defenseman in the world. That is the end of this game video review. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Head on over to thednvr.com for all of our coverage. I am Rudo, and don't ever question Kale McCarr.